Good evening, everyone. This is Susan Campfield with SueStampfield.com. Welcome. Welcome to my craft room. We're going to make a fun fold card tonight. Surprise. I love fun folds. So i um, super excited about this one. Looking forward to sharing it with you. Um, I am kind of on an unusual day for me. Usually I am live on Saturday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Central Time and Tuesday evenings at 7.30 Central Time. And that was the plan for yesterday. Actually, my husband and I had a concert last night. This concert was originally supposed to be in March, on March 20th of 2020, which is my birthday, actually. And uh, COVID hit and it got rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled. So um, it was last night. So I was planning to re-record or pre-record um, the video and share it with you um, at our normal time last evening. So you know when where to be and I'm consistent and all of those things. But I didn't get it done. I sent out the project sheet newsletter yesterday. I hope you got that. I did the mm, looking for see if I could grab one. Uh, I here's one here. In the project sheet, I sent the bridge fold card that we did um, a week or so ago. Um, oh, got a piece of tape in here, my, my hidden backwards back door thing. So hopefully you subscribe to my free weekly project sheets. Um, I did a very detailed uh, tutorial on the um, this, not bridge fold card, Susan, bay window card. Oh my goodness, the bay window card. So um, let's put that up here real quick. Please help me remember to take this down when we get to our project. But um, if you would like to subscribe to the free project sheet emails, um, I do some great tutorials that I send out so that it can keep you inspired, keep you creating, and um, they do take a while. <laughs> so I ran out of time and I could have tried to quickly uh, do the video. My husband was literally waiting for me in the car <laughs> to go and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna just push it off a day because I enjoy being here live with you. It's so much more fun when we can chat back and forth in the comments and so forth. So we're here tonight, day late. That's okay. So I hope you're having a lovely weekend. Um, again, my name is Susan Campfield. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are here on my Sue Stampfield YouTube channel or you might be joining me over on Facebook in my Sue Stampfield group where we do a lot of creative fun. And then, or you could be on my business page, which is Susan Campfield Independent Demonstrator. Wherever you are, welcome. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. And um, I think we can go ahead and get started. So let's see. I feel like there's stuff I need to tell you. Um, tomorrow is the last day of February. I know, like, where did that, how did that happen? Um, but um, that means that its celebration is ending. So it's your last chance to get your celebration freebies in. Um, last chance to get your orders in for celebration. It's also your last chance to get your order placed if you want to take part in the Sue Stamfield Crafternoon Creative Escape in March. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera. Hello, Helen from Michigan. Hey, Pat in Chicago. Brandy's here from Arizona. Got people all over. Lisa is here. Thank you, Lisa. That's so kind of you. I love it when you guys are, you guys are the best. You're so kind. Lisa's in Hawaii. Fantastic. Felicia's here from Pennsylvania. Welcome. We're we're all over the place tonight. That's fantastic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip to my, where's the button? Where's the button? <laughs> I'm going to flip to this camera. Hey, there's my desk. Mm. Catching the little bit edge of my stand. Gosh, that drives me crazy, you guys. Let's see if I can fix it. Do you see this little bit of dark spot there? It's just, mm. now I've got it all blurry. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now it's focusing. All right, I think we're all set here. So um, make sure, am I right? Am I seriously upside down? Oh, goodness. Hang on. Hold the phone. All right, you're going to see the, the, the behind the scenes, <laughs> the messiness of my craft desk. Look, I got daffodils. I got everything piled up, cute stuff everywhere. Um, so this was the one that went out in the project sheet um, email. 
And you know what? Tonight's card is a little bit similar. It's um, uh, so I want to keep this out because that they're they've got some similarities. So um, I'm just going to oh gosh, I'm trying to figure out which corner it is that's catching. It doesn't look like it should be, but it is. Okay, all right. So we're gonna. Um, you did Myrtle did the bay window card for a swap. Yay! Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, well, I'm not showing, uh, Susan says she wish, wishes her desk was only as messy as what I just showed you. There's a bigger mess all around. I only showed you part of it. <laughs> so, um, Crafternoon, what is Crafternoon? Crafternoon is a new event that I started in January. Um, and so I send out a packet. If you place, uh, people that placed a $50 order with me in uh, December, received a packet in the mail to make one of the featured fun fold card of the month. And this was the featured fun fold card in January. It was the freestanding um, fun fold card. And uh, just quickly show you some of them here. And I'm not even going to show all of them. There was a lot. I got a little carried away. Um, this was the one that people received in the mail. Um, now, when you get your packet, there are no stamped images. Um, there are die cut and embossed images, but because of the Stampin' Up! copyright, I can't mass produce and stamp a bunch of those images and not make a card and just send them. Um, you can certainly make a card and send it to someone if it was complete, but I didn't want to make them all the way. <laughs> so this was a freestanding fun fold card. Now, if you missed out on that afternoon, no worries. I got your back. Um, I have a tutorial bundle that those people that ordered in December they not only got to take the, the uh, got the packet in the mail, but they also got the full tutorial bundle for actually all of these cards. Um, and you can also purchase this tutorial bundle. It's uh, $10 for complete detailed instructions on all of these cards. So that was January. Fast forward to this month with February, and we did the box top pop-up card. So this was the one that people that placed an order in January. They got this packet in the mail in February and they got to make the pop-up card. And this one was a lot of fun. I really had fun. I could have kept going on this one, you guys. I love this one, how it looks like a present. So I did one with a tag. Um, we have the, the sympathy card. Uh, this tutorial tells about how to use the 12 by 12 paper, all the things. We did hat cards. Well, a hat card, but there's a bazillion more. I could have, I just could have kept going. So fun. <laughs> I love to take a fun fold and just let my creativity uh, go and um, create. But one of the fun ones that I made was these two cards. Um, so I did the box top pop up, but it looked like a garden shed to me. So this one is kind of our inspiration for tonight. We're going to use the, um, the uh, home and garden bundle. And also pair it with this Plentiful Plants bundle. So that was kind of my inspiration for tonight. We can look at the inside of this one if you want. Um, there we go. Awesome. And then this one, which was the masculine card. So the bench in there with the shovel. So super fun. Um, this tutorial is also available to purchase um, if you didn't get it for free. So um let's move on so tonight we're doing a fun fold card and this is the fun fold card that we're making this evening this is called the uh floating uh what's it called susan yeah uh floating frame fun fold card so you can see it kind of makes a triangle here and it tucks into this panel so that it can stand on the desk for display so that's why it kind of reminded me of the bay window card because that one also tucks in on the side for display. So this one, I will be writing up a free project sheet. So if you subscribe to my free project sheets emails, you'll get this uh, tutorial later in the week with all of the dimensions and all the things. But we're going to make it tonight and walk you through. So um, I was inspired uh by this card. Isn't it cute fun fold? I mean, literally the possibilities are endless. So let me show you the card that inspired this fun fold. Um, I have a fantastic team. They're just the most 
delightful people. <laughs> uh, they're just wonderful. And we do a card swap. And so this card swap was with my directs, my first level directs, the people that signed up directly with me or that I'm their ne next active uh, team leader. And this card, our theme was Fun Folds. And this card was from Kelly Burkhardt, one of my team members. She used the... Um, I'm gonna have to look at the name, um, the name of the stamp set. I'll do that in a minute. But this was the floating frame card that inspired me. So you can see she used a embossed panel here for the side to decorate instead of a designer paper, and then to do the do two designer panels in the front. Um, and this card is actually, um, I think it's only four inches wide, or maybe four and an eighth. And I asked Kelly what the name of the fold was, and she told me that um, she found it from a, a UK demonstrator, uh, Flutter by Heidi uh, was is the name of her uh, YouTube channel. And in the UK and Australia, their cardstock sizes are a little bit different than what we use here in the United States. Here in the United States, eight and a half by 11 is our, our cardstock size. Theirs is different. And so this was probably why it was narrower and there were a lot of eighth inches. So I adapted it to work with, you know, the eight and a half by 11 size to make it a standard uh, US size. But Kelly used, um, I never know how to pronounce this flower, uh, this stamp set. So I'm gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna remove the banner here. So it's not blocking us. There we go, that's a little better. Um, Okay, I gotta look I, <laughs> before I attempt to say it. Um, I actually, this is a little bit embarrassing, but I Googled how to, <laughs> I Googled a, a video on how to pronounce it. So it is Ranunculus Romance is the name of, the, it's actually a bundle with um, dies that, that can cut it out or you can get just the stamp set. And so for this one, Kelly actually just used the stamps, but it is pronounced uh, ranunculus. So you, you, uh, put the, um, put the emphasis on the word nun there and then cueless. So in case you're wondering like me, how the heck do you say that? <laughs> um, yeah, they are pretty colors. I agree with you. She used the, um, okay. I'm going to mess up the name of that paper. What is it called? That paper is called <laughs> Symbols of Fortune was the designer series paper that she used for this card. So, all right, let's move on here. We're going to do ours with some other products. Put Kelly's over here so I don't lose it. We can look at it again at the end. So one of the ones that we're going to focus on was this really fun, cool set called Home and Garden. Now there are a lot of, uh, um, there's two, there's a Father's Day and there's a dad in there. Um, and to the man who can do anything. So it certainly can be for masculine cards, but you can do so much else <laughs> with it. So um, so we're going to play with that tonight. And we're actually going to pair it with a bundle from the annual catalog. And that bundle is called Plentiful Plants. It's this one right here with the matching dies. And there is a designer series paper for this one that is called Bloom Where You're Planted. And uh, we're going to use that as well. So, whew, you guys ready? Let's go. Let's do it. I'm excited. All right. So here's our card. I've got my cheat sheet here with all the dimensions. Um, I will try and reiterate uh, the different score, sign, score lines and whatnot. But no, as long as you're on my project sheet email list, you will get the project sheet. I've got all my bits and pieces here. Let's start by doing some scoring, shall we? So I'm going to bring in, I'm clearing the deck here. <laughs> and I'm going to bring in the big, the big one. So this is the um, Simply Scored scoring tool. I apologize for that reflection from my ring light. Um, now you absolutely could do the scoring on a paper trimmer. Uh, I kind of think it's probably a little easier for you to see the score marks um, on video if I use this one. So that's the only reason I'm doing it. You can totally use the, the paper trimmer. That would be just fine. So our card base is five and a half by eight and a half. So half of a standard piece of uh, cardstock. And then we're gonna score this at three fourths of an inch. And then at two and a half inches. 
and then at four and a quarter. So just to reiterate that, we scored it at uh, three fourths of an inch, two and a half inches, and four and a quarter. Okay, and we can uh, before I before I take this away. Uh, oh, you know what? I am gonna. I'll just set it over here. We'll get to that part in a minute. Actually, it is the next part. So we're gonna fold um, on the center part of our card, just folding it in half so that our remaining score lines are on the top. Now we wanna fold one of these as a mountain and one as a valley. So the very first one we're folding as a mountain. And so that just means it goes up, <laughs> right? There's our card front goes up like a mountain. The second one we want to fold like a valley. So I'm going to fold that one back on itself and then it should go down. So one goes up, one goes down. So we've got a mountain fold and a valley fold. All right. All right. Next up is two little pieces of cardstock. Gonna dig them out of my pile of cardstock here. So I've got two little pieces of cardstock. These are very important. These are the little, I don't know, I call them floaters. <laughs> They're the little floaty pieces that attach to the back of this center panel that keep it um, floating free from the rest of the card. So um, they are, let me look at the size. I call them floaters. They are one and a half by two and a half. And I've got two of them. And I'm going to score them at three-fourths of an inch, each of them, which is basically that center point. So let's bring this back in. My stylus tool and just score that right down the middle at three-fourths of an inch and repeat with this one. So again, we have the floaters are two pieces that are one and a half by two and a half and scored in the center, which is three-fourths of an inch. Sorry, I walked away from the mic. Three-fourths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this and crease it. And fold this one and crease it. All right, so there we have those two little pieces. And these actually have to go on first. They go on before the designer paper because we want to cover up this part. Um, and just this portion will be on the back of our piece and won't be visible. So I'm just going to take some seal. You could use seal. You could use seal plus. You could use multi-purpose liquid glue, whatever you want. Whatever your adhesive of choice is. And you want to adhere that about in the middle, right up next to that center fold, the mountain. Okay. Don't have to be right on top of it, just right up to it. And then we're going to repeat with this one and put it on the other side, as you probably already figured out. Goodness, we got glue everywhere. And I'm just going to put my card flat and put it right across from the other one. So that is the little, those are the flaps that I'll be able to adhere my piece to. So now I can put my designer paper um, on underneath. This big thing is in my way. <laughs> I'm going to move it. <laughs> moved it like 20 times already. So I have some of the Bloom Where Your Planter designer series paper. Um, this is the side that has the brick on it. And I am using cinnamon cider uh, cardstock here, which of course matches the brick. And I'm just going to go ahead and, oops, I'm not putting it on there. I'm actually going to put it on the back of this. So these pieces measure one and a half by five and a quarter, and there are two of them. And of course, these could be any pattern designer paper, whatever goes with your, um, your theme. But again, one and a half by five and a quarter, and there are two of them. All right. Yeah, a little more adhesive here, yeah, a little bit more that going anywhere. Oh, I got glue on my desk again, you guys. Need that goo gone at the ready, right? <laughs> and that's downstairs. So there you go. All right. So we're going to put this piece right across. I Now I am a little anal about things. So I did cut 
one panel that was three inches wide by five and a quarter and cut it in half so that I could match the patterns because I thought if the bricks are wonky, it would drive me crazy. You don't, if it doesn't bother you, you don't have to do that. It's totally optional. All right, so we're going to grab our other pieces here. So another piece of cinnamon cider, and we have a, uh, a basic white piece. And those are going to go on this floating piece, okay? So before I attach this, I want to do a little bit of stamping. And I'm going to stamp the words birthday wishes. Those come from the Home and Garden stamp set, which is the one of the ones that we're using tonight. So I'm going to grab the birthday wishes. And sure you are, Susan. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I found it. And it's dirty because I didn't even clean it off. <laughs> Oops. And this is the Evening Evergreen stamp pad. And I'm using that one because of the, um, the colorful plants we're going to be adding to this. Uh, do have that color involved. So I got adhesive all over this desk. Oh my goodness. Susan needs to clean her desk, you guys. All right. So I'm going to stamp the birthday wishes right there near the top in the Evening Evergreen. And I need that again in a minute. So I'm going to live dangerously and leave it, <laughs> leave it open and just hope I don't uh, stick white cardstock in it or anything silly like that. So this panel is, let's talk about these two panels and what size they are. I call them the front piece and the layer for the front piece. Um, so this is the layer. It's two by four. And the front piece that it's layering on to is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. So the white one is two by four and the cinnamon cider is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that is going to be attached to our little floating pieces here. So I'm just going to put some adhesive on those. You could use glue dots if you prefer, totally up to you. I'm going to hold them flat and pop this panel on top of them. Sure, I've got it somewhat centered and then pressed down. So now instead of being adhered to a flat card, it's adhered to these pieces that are um, on each side of the score, which means it lifts up from the center of the card. Kind of cool, right? So those little floaters do their job. All right, so we have this done. We're going to now work on this part on the inside, and that's where. Hmm, that what we're really going to do? Yeah, that's where I need your advice. So um, we have a piece of evening evergreen that we're going to mount on dimensionals so that this side can tuck into it so it can stand up. This is going to form as a stopper or a kickstand or an easel, whatever you want to call it, um, that the front of the card can tuck into to stand up. And then we're going to put some designer series paper on top of this. Um, for the card that I showed you, the sample card, I used these, uh, all these papers come from the um, Bloom Warrior Planted uh, Designer Series paper. So the one that I showed you, I used this particular pattern that was this, um, hang on, this hanging vine. This is one of those patterns where it's made that you can cut it apart and easily make six cards out of the piece of Designer Series paper. I liked that one because it sort of matched this kind of uh, viney plant that I have in the pot. So I used that one on this card, and we could certainly do that on this one as well, or we could change it up. So let me uh, give you some choices. So the first one is the hanging vine. The second choice is this one, which is just a bunch of leafy plants. So let's we're gonna we're gonna pull this one in because we'll want to see what it looks like on the, the finished one. So this one is um, just a lot of colors, a lot of plants going crazy. So that's the second one. So we've got our, our hanging vine, we've got lots of plants, or we have this one, which is I'm gonna call this one the fern. So let's see what that would look like. So we've got the fern there. That's quite nice too. So if you could vote, if you want the vine, the leaves, or the fern, why don't we call them that? Vine, leaves, or fern. And let me know what your preference is there. 
The leafy plants do look like a living wall, don't they? Okay, I've got one for the fern, or one for the hanging vine. I've got a bunch for the fern, more for the vine, more for the fern, more for the vine or leaves. Leaves. <laughs> Looks like they've got lots of options here. All right, I'm going to make an executive decision here, and I'm going to go with the fern because we do already have one with the vine. So let's do one with the fern. Let's see what we think. So the fern is actually the flip side of the, the brick, in case you were wondering. And I'm just gonna put some adhesive on that. And then we're gonna talk about it. We need to be very careful on how you mount this to the card so that it can do its job. And just to recap, its job is to be the kickstand for the, um, so the card can stand up. So let me give you the dimensions for these two pieces of paper. The uh, designer series paper on this, and I'm calling it the stopper, is a one and three eighths by five and an eighth. And it's mounted on a piece of evening evergreen. That's the layer under the stopper. And that's one and a half by five and a quarter. Okay. So that stopper, we want it mounted right here. But this fairly long piece of paper has to slide under it and it it's almost uh almost half the width of the paper so i'm going to mount this on dimensionals but i only want them on this side over here right on the right side so that they don't get in the way and how do i know that because the first time i made it i did it wrong <laughs> that's how we learn right so i want to help you guys avoid some of the the uh, mistakes that i made the first time i did this card so i've got my dimensionals here i'm going to load this baby up do one at the top, one at the bottom. Oh gosh, let's put a couple more in there. That's not enough. You can also use your, your edges, your little freebie edges for this. I say freebie because it says in the catalog there's 300 dimensionals in a package, but we all know that if you use those edges, you get way more than 300. <laughs> so here are our ferns, and we're going to pop those right there. Okay, so we've got the ferns. And I left the same amount of border on the three sides. And let's see how we did. Let's see if this will tuck under now. So that goes right underneath there. Okay. So now all we have to do is decorate our card. I do have a, a piece of white to go on the inside. So we'll, we'll uh, need to decorate that. But let's go ahead and do some playing with these awesome dyes. I love dyes and I'd love to mix and match them um, with different things. To me, these, um, the Home and Garden set and the Home and Garden dyes are the perfect accompaniment to this Plentiful Plants uh, set. There's also, I think, a lot of sets that you could, other sets you could pair these with, um, ones that have trees in them for the rake. Uh, you can make a really cute fall card. Uh, with leaves and the rake and a tree. Um, you could do piles of dirt. Um, you could do a Valentine card with I dig you. <laughs> um, all sorts of fun things. Um, of course, on this card, I made that step stool into a, uh, or the ladder into a step stool. Um, so, so many possibilities, but we're going to go ahead and do some die cutting here. So let's set this aside. I'm going to grab some more of this Plentiful Plants paper. Um, this one has these pots on it. And so let's bring in the Plentiful Plants bundle and dies. So the, the uh, pot uh, die um, cuts this out. There's actually a die for this one as well and also for this planter. So several of the planters have matching dies. Or, of course, in the set you've got, um, you could stamp your own. So I'm going to take some snips here and just uh, grab this pot right here. And by the way, you can use this one up on the edge because um, most of it's there. Like you don't lose hardly any on those, uh, the ones that are up on the top edge. How will the recipient know to tuck under the side? Um, you know, it depends on who you're sending it to, but if you think they won't know that for sure, I would just write it on the inside and say, um, you can stand this card for display by tucking the side panel 
um, uh, or checking the front under the side panel. So you might need to give them a little instruction on that, depending on who it's going to. We crafters would figure it out, wouldn't we? <laughs> if we've ever seen an e we've seen an easel card before. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. We have more things we want to cut. So we've got our pot. So we need to die cut that, but we've also got some tools here. So the, the thing I love about these tool dies is that uh, they're two part. So we've got the trowel here that we're going to die cut from red uh, cardstock. And then we have a separate blade for the trowel that we can cut out of silver paper. And then we can make it really realistic. The um, the shovel is the same. You can die cut the um, shovel from silver. Hang on, I've, I've got, oh, oops, I just knocked that out. Okay, hang on, hold on, sorry. <laughs> so here's a, a, what I was talking about with the shovel. You can die cut the shovel out of black like I did here. And then I did do it out of a wood grain paper. And then I did this out of silver. So you can kind of build a realistic looking shovel. And then the same with the uh, secateurs or the grass shears or pruners, whatever you want to call them. You can die cut them in a solid color and then die cut the, um, the, sh the, the blade part out of silver. So let's, we're going to do that. So we've got that ready. We're also going to do a couple plants here. I'm not even sure what we're going to use because I'm hoping you guys will help me decide on the inside of the card. But I'm going to have two that we can um, use. So I'm inking up these leaf stamps. And again, these are from the Plentiful Plants. I'm using this ferny one and this one, or no, the viney one and this leafy one. <laughs> How's that for technical plant terms? Not... All right, so I'm going to stamp that in Evening Evergreen, and I'm stamping it onto Garden Green cardstock, which gives me a really nice contrast. Oh, bad stamping, Susan. Oh, hey, it came out better than I thought. I didn't think I had it inked up all the way. I'm totally fine with that. It looks fine. All right, and then I also need a pair of, so again, I'm bouncing back and forth between two sets. I hope that's not too confusing. I want to use these little gloves. I love these gloves. I've used them on every card I've made because they're just adorable. And you know what? I'm going to stamp them in Evening Evergreen ink because that's what I've got open. And I'm going to stamp them on real red. Okay. All right. I think I've got my stamping done for now. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Put that away. All right. So we grabbed our Got some silver, brushed silver foil. This is from the silver um, foil specialty pack that has three different silvers in it. That's for my little blade. I've got my um, little trowel. I can put that on here. Let's see, what am I missing? I am missing the die that cuts out the gloves. I want that. Um, you know what? I'm going to cut some hooks. I don't even know if we're going to use them, but we might. I'm also going to cut some grass. <laughs> because we might want that too. Who knows what we're going to want to do on the inside of this card. Okay, we also have in the Plentiful Plants, I'm bouncing back to that one. So I'm using the pot die from that one. I'm also using the two um, dies that cut out these plants that I stamped. All right, let's see what we can do. I'm going to just grab the little mini embossing machine here. And I'm going to bring this in. And we're going to die cut our things here. This one just fits a little bit better on my stamping desk. So I'm doing die cutting. So I have the uh, number one plate, which it says for die cutting. And then I have a number two plate. And then I'm going to put my, let's see, what should we do first? Let's do our gloves and our trowel first. And... I'm going to grab a post-it note here and just, I'm lining up my die with the, uh, my stamped image with the die. And I'm going to put that over the top, tuck my little trowel in there. And yeah, I'm just going to send that through here. All 
right. There we go. So we've got our gloves and our little trowel. All right. This is the fun part. And right, I'm going to flip my little plate over because I don't want it to curl. So it is a good idea to flip them every time. And let's see, we're going to go ahead and do the brush silver here. And we're going to take our little blade. And we'll take this. This die has three hooks on it. I don't even know if I'm using them yet. But since I'm sending the silver through, I might as well. You know what? Send uh, send the uh, scissors for the shears on through as well because I got extra room on my little piece of foil, right? All right, crank that through. End up touching these inky stamps over here. I apologize, I might be shaking the camera a little bit, so I'm sorry about that if I am. But we got to cut our stuff, right, guys? All right, so let's see how we did. So here we have our little trowel blade. How cute is that? And we also did some blades for the secateurs. I actually think I have laying on my desk because everyone has an extra set of, <laughs> of uh, pruning shears laying on their desk that it's a die cut, right? Sure, of course I do. And then here we have these three hooks. Um, they are going to need a little convincing to come out of the die. I do like that it does three at a time. I think that's cool. Like I said, I don't even know if we're going to use these on this card, but I had extra room on my silver, so why not, right? All right, so we've got our three little hooks, and we can put these dies back because we've got those all cut. And let's see, what do we have left? We're going to do our little pot here. Did I turn this yet? I don't think I did. You guys have to watch me, help me out here. All right, so I'm going to take the designer paper and put this little pot die right over the top of it and line that up. Oh, that's crooked, Susan. Okay, there we go. Let's line that up a little better and send that through. Oh, Sherry, you haven't used your garden tools yet? Yeah, they're so fun. You're going to have a ball. So many choices. The ladder. I just stamped the rake for the first time today. That was pretty fun. All right, so got this. Got our little pot cut out now. There we go. And we have, uh oh, I'm going to start losing things here. Let's do the last one, which is the plants and the grass. So I'm going to bring that in and we're going to again use our post it note to stick these down. Put the grass aside for the moment. Just want to line it up so that I can just, uh, the edge of the die should actually completely cover the stamped part of the image. I'm going to add some grass there. I got another little empty spot over here. Don't even know if we need the grass, but hey. <laughs> We got extra green cardstock. So this is why Susan has little <laughs> fun little things all over the top of her desk. All right. Because why cut just one, right? All right. Send that through. And... All right. All right. I think we have everything die cut. If not, it's not going far. It's right here on my chair. So um, Nicole has an idea about make two cards and flip one to the edge of the hot. Hmm. Sounds like you've got a really cool idea, Nicole. I would love to see that. Uh, I would love to see what you come up with there. I'm not, I'm not quite following it, but I'm a really visual person. So sometimes when people describe things, I get a little lost. So all right, we've got our plants here and all our things. So the um, these two little grassy bits that I used are from the tool dies. There's actually a taller chunk of grass on this one if you um, would prefer that. 
And that's the uh, Plentiful Plants bundle. All right. I think all the dyes. Oops. Got one. Okay. Now all the dyes are back where they belong. Right? Oh, nope. You just got to watch me. I'm going to lose all my dyes. The other dyes that come in the Plentiful Plants are the ladder, which you can, you know, stamp and cut out. The rake. Let's see, I've got a rake here somewhere. Stamped him today. The rake. Um, the hooks, we did that. Oh, this one is a, a piece of wood, actually. It's even got the grain in there. So um, it's made to make a bar to put the hooks on. But I actually used it on that other card that I showed you to make a bench. There's even little dirt chunks or rock chunks, whatever you want there. So, of course, the shovel. Um, lots of fun. Lots of fun things. All right. How are we doing here, guys? <laughs> You're going to have a play after the video? Cool, Nicole. I would love to see that. All right. So I have the pot here. Let me show you how I did this uh, plant. This planter on my... So I've got my pot. I've got my little uh, trowel blade and my trowel handle. I'm going to grab some multi-purpose liquid glue and add some to my trowel again with the liquid glue a lake is a mistake a dot is a lot and then something about a skinny line is just fine is that right okay I finally got it right so I'm just gluing that silver blade to the handle and I've got this cute little trowel just love that it's so cute and then we have our plant here. Now I'm going to tuck the one side of the plant behind the pot. So I'm going to add a glue dot behind this piece and a glue dot behind this piece. And um, I'm going to put a glue dot on my trowel so I can tuck it in right here. So let's do that. Grab my glue dots here. If the glue dots are too wide. You can always take your pick tool and kind of Come on, camera, focus. Um, kind of fold the glue dot in half. This one does not want to fold in half. Or even wad it up into a gluey blob. <laughs> that works too. And pop it into place. Okay, which one was the one that's going to tuck? Okay. Short memory here. All right, so we've got that. So I'm going to tuck this one behind and stick these on the pot like so. And then I'm going to add a glue dot to the trowel blade. Again, fold this one or make it into a gluey blob. That's a technical term, gluey blob. You could also use uh, the liquid glue if you want. And we're just going to tuck it uh, behind the edge of the pot. I don't want it sticking out here. It's not going to look like it's in the pot. And so there we have our little trowel in the planter. And that's going to go right on the front. And then we're going to take our gloves that we cut out and we're going to add those to the front as well. I am going to pop this up onto dimensionals. And I'm going to put a dimensional in the center of the pot there. And I'm also going to put one right here between the plant and the pot to kind of a little extra insurance to make sure my plant doesn't fall out of my pot at any point. And I'm going to pop that on the front of the card. And then we're going to add our gloves. So I'm going to use a dimensional for that as well. Let's see, where did they go? Here they are. So take my gloves and just put them right over the pot. Um, when I put on my dimensionals, I feel like I put them a little too far in. I'm pulling this off. Maybe, maybe I am. Come on. Well, they almost all came. I'm actually going to add a couple more, <laughs> believe it or not, to a little bit farther in. I don't want to get too close to this edge because I don't want it to um, interfere with the tucking. But I also want this to stay lifted so that it's easy to tuck. I think that will be a little bit better. There we go. 
All right, so we've got the got a good start. Our, our front is really done, right? Um, and part of the inside is done. We just need to finish the other inside. So I have one more piece here that I want to give you the dimensions for. This is a piece of basic white that's going to go right in here. And this piece measures two and a half by five and a quarter. So I'm going to stick that inside. This is where we can write our inside message and also an opportunity to do a little more decorating. So this is where I'm hoping you guys will help me out once again. Almost straight. All right. <laughs> so I've got that inside panel there. And I happen to have, just so happen to have, uh, another pot right here. So we could put this pot on the inside and we could add uh, a plant to it and we could even add our um, pruners here, rash shears, whatever you want to call them. Add a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue to those. Isn't that just the coolest thing ever? <laughs> so fun. Um, and uh, we could put those, uh, we could hang those on a hook here up on the top of the card and put our sentiment here, have this in the bottom corner. We could also skip this all together. We could have our pot tipped over um, like that. We could have some little grass tufts on our card. Um, it's the, we can do whatever we want. There's so many choices. It's um, This is the fun part for me anyways, doing that playing. So um, let's see if you guys have any. Uh, yeah, I love these two together. They're just so fun. So, so many possibilities. I don't even know how to have you guys help me because there's so many choices that we could do here. So, um, I do want an inside sentiment though, and um, I want it to be birthday. So I'm just looking at what I happen to have laying about on my desk. And I'm gonna grab this one because you know what? It's here and um, it wins. And it's also one I really like. So those two things together are a good reason to use it. I'm just gonna clean it though, cause I, I know it's not an evening evergreen ink. It's probably early espresso or something like that. No, it might have been black actually. All right. So, what is this from? This is actually from uh, the Best Year stamp set, which is right here. Sorry, I'm knocking things around. The Best Year. Um, Hip Hip Parade would be cute for a birthday too, actually. Super cute. We've got some, um, but I like this one. Wishing you your best year yet. It's perfect for birthdays, isn't it? never know what to say in a birthday card. So, and I think the size will fit. Hang on. Get a little extra uh, cleaning stuff on it. So, all right, now I've committed. I've actually, um, I have actually glued this piece in already. So <gasps> now I got to stamp it straight. You guys, I can't flip it over. <laughs> oh, the pressure, the pressure. All right. Let's ink that up. All right. So we're going to stamp that. All right. I got to pull it down. Sorry. I hope you can still see that, but I need to be over the top of it or get it totally crooked. Mm -hmm. Teeny bit crooked, but not too bad. I can live with that. Can you guys live with that? I hope so. We could even hang these. Um, no, I like the little hook idea. All right. This is where I'm just going to play. I'm going to put a little hook inside here. I have a lot of um, some gardeners in my family. So garden cards are really handy. And my mom is actually in a member of her garden club for her tiny little town. And she sends uh, cards to all of the people for their birthdays. And uh, you know, I just think it is so important to, um, 
send handmade cards to people and just let them know that we care and we're thinking about them. Um, there's a lot of uh, nasty things in the world, especially right now. And so I think more than ever, it's a time for stampers that we can bring some unity and some love and kindness in the world by sharing our handmade cards. And I know it seems like a little thing, um, but it means the world to uh, the recipient. I'm using some glue dots here to stick my, um, my shears down so they look like they're hung on the hook. And then I'm going to put one more pot here. Now this pot actually could go here. I'm just afraid that that would interfere. And this plant does get a little bit lost on this. It actually looks a lot bigger here. Now I have to admit, I'm not one that puts, <laughs> uh, I have to admit this. I'm not one that puts a lot of words on the inside of the card. So I actually like to fill it up with other stuff and just, oh, look, I only have room to write my name. <laughs> Now, if you have more to say and you like to write, write a lot, then, you know, you could put less stuff on the inside, right? It's totally up to you. So um, I'm going to actually put the, the plant in the pot, on the pot, uh, with ferns here, or with the ferns, with glue dots. This isn't really even a fern. These are ferns over here. Whoops. Got my pot a little too far pop it over just a little bit because I don't want that hanging over. There we go. We got a little plant there. You know, you could even have these kind of um, looking like they're cutting by kind of having it half on and half off. There's a sample in the catalog where they did that, but um, so many fun options. You could even put, um, you know, have these little pieces of grass here. We could add some of those right in front. Totally, you know, so much to do. But I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to, I'm happy with this. Sometimes we add too much and we're like, oh, should have stopped. So I'm going to stop there. This again tucks in the side. So there we have our birthday wishes card. Let's bring in our other one here. Now this one I actually have not decorated the inside at all yet. So I'll have to use some of my leftover bits here to do the inside. Oh, got a rake coming in. What the? Okay, there we go. Um, so I've got, we've got our two different versions here. One with the ferns, one with the vine. I think they both look nice. Um, and uh, this one seriously needs some inside decorations. This one we have all fancy on the inside too. Wishing you your best year yet. What gardener wouldn't love getting that card, right? And then they can stand it up for display. Yay. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. I do have, oh, you know what? I'm going to show you this one more. It's not done, but um, I will finish this one. I will post it in our Sue Stamfield Facebook group. So this one is a uh, um, work in progress here. This one I was doing more as a masculine card. So for this one, I took the Simply Marvelous paper, which is a free celebration choice. Um, let me grab a piece here. Comes in a bunch of colors, or you get a bunch of colors in the pack. I use this one that is like the Smoky Slate uh, Basic Gray. I use this side. I embossed it with the brick and mortar embossing folder. Um, I got that idea from, I believe it was Janet Wakeland. Um, there's a, a Facebook page just for demonstrators that Stampin' Up! runs, and she had um, posted that there. So it gives it kind of that cool, almost like limestone. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Um, and then I, I hung a ladder. So this, this panel on Kelly's card, she did embossing for hers. On ours, we did designer paper. And this one I did designer paper, but I also decorated it so that when the card is um, open, they've got this uh, a panel on some things on the side there, right? So I can see the hook. I hung the ladder right on the hook and I did stamp the ladder right out of the same paper. Um, and then I just haven't decided what's going to go <laughs> on the front panel yet. Probably be some gloves because, you know, I love those little gloves. Um, I could do a rake and gloves. Um, that would be really cute. I could do the shovel. Oh, so much fun. All right. We'll see what I can come up with. And I will share that one in the Sue Stamfield Facebook group. And again, um, if you want to have the project sheet, I love to print out project sheets. It's so much easier for me, especially ones like these that have a lot, oh, I lost my gloves, a lot of measurements. Um, 
I just like to have those step by step. So um, if you would like that project sheet, all you need to do is subscribe to my free project sheets, which are right there. And when you subscribe, you're going to get a couple freebies um, right off the bat. And the one that I have, one of them, one of them is the tulips. The other one is um, this card, the bay window card. I just put that up today. So that is out there. So you can subscribe at that. Um, if you would like to take part, if you love fun folds like I do, um, if you would like to take part in the March, whoops, I'm going to flip cameras here. There we go. There I am. Hello. Um, if you would like to take place in the uh, March Crafternoon event, uh, place a $50 order today or tomorrow. That's the cutoff is tomorrow. And so I can get my stuff ordered and get everything cut up and off in the mail to everyone. So you get a fun fold uh, packet in the mail for me. You do need to be in the U.S. for that to happen. And team members, uh, no worries. I've got your back. Of course, you always get all the tutorials for free. So uh, that tutorial bundle and all these others uh, are coming to you. So you just, Kathy, you just ordered the garden tools. Oh, you're going to have a blast. And you're a gardener. So I know you're going to love these. So thanks so much, everyone, for spending tonight with me. Oh, my gosh, it's almost 830 and I have to go. We haven't had supper yet. <laughs> I promised that the boys I would make uh, spaghetti and meatballs. So. I'm going to go get on that. Take care, everyone. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time, which will be Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Central. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.